Hi, my name is Ina Agarwal, and I'm a senior at Stanford University. And my name is Alora Azrani, and I'm also a senior at Stanford University. So we'd like to begin by giving you some background of ourselves and of this speech, so we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves to begin. So I've taken programming classes at Stanford, and in high school, my favorite class was calculus, and I'm really interested in innovation and particularly the internet of things. I'm working on a project at Stanford right now around how we can improve the emotional well-being of college students. Um, in my free time, I love to explore San Francisco with my friends, and I painted my nails last night. So I really like to make things. I'm really interested in building things, starting something from scratch. In high school, my favorite memory was building this um, 3D model of an Empire State Building with puzzle pieces. And more recently, I just created a 3D printed button. So I love to read just random blogs on the internet. One of my favorites is this cooking blog. It's called How Sweet It Is. Um, and I learned how to make Meyer lemon scones from scratch. So if I were to take you to my house, I would show you two things. One is this super awesome coin collection of the United States of America in state quarters. And the second are these yogurt cans that I used to transform into coin collection jars to help fundraise for animal shelters in my local town. So I love to travel. It's one of my passions. Um, I actually studied abroad last fall. I lived in Berlin, Germany for a quarter. And this past summer, I worked in London. So I own this absolutely adorable, small, fluffy dog. She's a white Bichon Frise, and she's my best friend. Her name is Muffy. This past Black Friday, I actually bought matching sweaters for she and I. <laughs> I have a really strange obsession with geography. I used to collect stamps when I was little. I had this little stamp book that I would put them all in, um, and I actually once memorized the capital of every country in the world just for fun. And most of my wardrobe has some sort of sparkles attached to it, and my ideal day would be spent shopping in the mall with my best friends um, and sitting down over coffee reading magazines, probably Seventeen magazine, even though I just turned 21. Um, I'm actually a computer science major at Stanford University. I, some of the coolest classes I've taken have been in things like artificial intelligence and natural language processing. So you probably thought that I was a nerd in the beginning. And it was probably really easy to believe that I was a girly girl. But how hard was it to believe the rest? And most of all, how hard is it to believe that we're both? So three years ago, when I started at Stanford University, I was actually a psychology major. And I was so 100% self-assured that this was exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so fall quarter, freshman year, I enrolled in Psych 1. I got a job as a research assistant in the psych lab. And I had this goal as like a somewhat naive 17-year-old. I said, I'm going to change the world. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be a psychology major, and that's how I'm going to do that. So I actually entered Stanford as a pre-vet. I was really interested in animal welfare, and I was good at math and science in high school, and that was a natural progression for me. I remember a week before orientation started, my father and I went to the local animal, sh the anim the local animal hospital to drop off my resume for an assistant veterinary technician job. Um, but by the end of the year, I was exhausted waking up at 6 a.m. every single morning to go to the animal, I mean, every single weekend to go to the animal hospital. And I f was bored by the same bio and chem classes that all my friends were taking across the nation. And I just couldn't figure out how to incorporate public service into all of this. So while I was pursuing this psychology degree, I actually took a computer science class. And I took it the last quarter of my freshman year, and I only took it because they made me. It was a general education requirement. And I had this really vivid memory. Um, during the end of my freshman year, I was sitting in the psych building late at night, all alone. It was in the dark. I was running an experiment. And at the same time, I was doing my first CS assignment. And I was so frustrated because I couldn't get anything to work. I literally spent an hour trying to get an animated robot to pick up an animated newspaper. I was so frustrated. But you know what? 
Eventually, I got it to work, and I was so thrilled that that excitement got me through the second problem, and the adrenaline got me through the third problem, and the sheer idea that if I could learn how to program, I could build anything I wanted, that got me through the rest. Well, that and a lot of caffeine. <laughs> So backtracking to the end of my freshman year, I was seeking alternatives. I ended up reading an article about Marissa Mayer, and that coupled with a very dear friend of mine who was an adamant scientist encouraged me to take my first computer science class at the beginning of my sophomore year. It was so interesting. Never before had I thought that I could solve logic puzzles and solve really big problems and be creative about it all build something from scratch and have something to, something to show for it in a classroom setting. And then I soon realized that the peers who I revered the most were those who were using their knowledge of computing to create really interesting products that were touching thousands of people, and they were able to play with their ideas. But I thought to myself, why did it take me 18 years to get to this position? And so I talked to a lot of people, and I thought about it more. I had conversations with my family. And I soon recognized that it was actually the stereotypes that put me in this position. I was being limited because most predominantly I was surrounded by doctors and lawyers in my hometown on the East Coast, and I had no idea what an engineer was. I literally didn't know what computer science was until I came to college. So I, on the other hand, I grew up in Silicon Valley. My dad's an engineer. I've seen them all my life. But I had it in my head that engineers they were antisocial, they were nerdy, they didn't shower, and I just, I, I never saw myself as being someone like that. And so Ina and I, because we never, we never intended to be nerds, it took us a really long time to be okay with it. It's great to be a nerd, and it's even greater to be a nerd who wears heels. <laughs> but you might be asking, why are we standing here today? Why do we need to talk about this? Isn't it obvious that the combination of what you wear, what you believe, how you act, and your career can be entirely defined by your own standards. And you might be curious, why have Alora and myself dedicated the past two years of our lives, pretty much half of our college career, focused on this cause? So I want to tell you a story. Ina and I gave a talk this summer at a conference in Munich, and it was very much like this one. It was a conference focused on women and women's empowerment and leveling the playing field. And we gave this talk about why every woman should learn how to program. So we told our own stories, we shared statistics, we showed clips from this documentary we'd made, and I think we made a pretty compelling argument. So 20 minutes later, we get off the stage, and people start approaching us to ask us questions. And the first person, he comes up to me and he looks at me and he says, so you know how to program? Now I know she looked good, but come on, guys. <laughs> We're, we live in an amazing society where there are so many feminist groups, there are so many women in tech organizations supporting these new generations of people, but we're still sending these subconscious messages to young girls that they can't be technologists, that they aren't mathematical or, and they're not scientifically inclined, that they can't be nerdy. So that's why we need to talk about this. So if you look at you know, what is a computer programmer, you typically see two images. You see the programmer, you see someone who's up late drinking energy drinks, like hacking out code, and then you see you know, the nerdy guy who's in the corner by himself with his computer, and neither of those appeal images are really appealing to most people, including women. So they actually did a study where they had a bunch of women reading articles that said, you know, all those stereotypes are true, like that's really what computer programming is about, and of course they were much less inclined to want to go into programming after reading those. But then you had them read articles that said, those aren't true. Those stereotypes, they're not at all true, and suddenly they were way more inclined to want to be a computer programmer. Now let's backtrack to our childhood. We start beginning to watch movies where 18% of the characters who have jobs are women. We read books where men have twice as many jobs as women, and the media tells us that our most important attribute are our physical assets. We are told that we are, when we are strong leaders, people won't like us. Young girls and young boys actually do equally well on the math section of the SAT. But if you ask students 
to state their gender before they take the test, just state it, girls wildly underperform boys. So while you might think that it's easy for us to transcend these boundaries with the power of thought and logic and convincing young girls that they can do it, it's actually not that simple. I want to tell you a story. This past summer, um, I worked at a large tech company with my best friend from home. She was on the marketing team and I was on the product team. And one trait of mine that I'm known for at home is my love of fashion and my love of heels. But for the first two weeks of that job, I decided I needed to wear jeans, boots, and often way too large sweatshirts. And the fact that she wore heels to work every day and was already five inches taller than me didn't help hide the fact that I was buying into these stereotypes that I had been so vehemently and publicly opposing for the past two years of my life. So about three weeks into the internship, she called me out. She said, you are defying everything that your identity is built upon. Why are you buying into all of this? And so I boldly tried to respond back by saying, no, I need my team to believe my talent and they need to see my technological ability before they're able to judge me for the way that I look. I had been fighting for this for two years and I was already buying into it all. So we do it to ourselves sometimes. We buy in even though we don't believe it. So as two female college students, who love technology and are really dedicated to making sure it's a more equitable field, the only thing we can really do is to be that change that we want to see. And so Ina and I have worked really hard to find ways to marry our love of life with our intellect. And we try to keep each other accountable in the process. So we run an organization that's led by 20 amazing Stanford students. And our goal of the organization is to reinvent the image of the technologist, to make it more inclusive to all types of people, regardless of their interests and their background. And we run a lot of campaigns and initiatives and projects. And while we realize that that has made impact in exposing high school girls to what the field of computer scientist is, presenting them role models and such, but we realize that the most impact that we can have is by providing these backgrounds and these actual people who are changing the state right now, and that's going to be what changes the opinion. So instead of focusing on the fact that we have too few women in technology, let's celebrate the people who are both. And we're up here to give you three reasons why it's awesome to be both a girl and a geek. So as we've talked about today, and as you guys probably know, the nerd has this image of liking really, really big computers, loving energy drinks, and working really, really late at night. But that's not really what a nerd is. A nerd is someone who is crazy about something and loves it and wants to talk about it with people, and wants to learn from people. And quite frankly, I don't care about how big my computer screen size is, and I don't really like being in the basement of Gates. Um, at two in the morning, and I'd much rather tea than a sugary energy drink. But I'd consider myself a nerd because I'm absolutely crazy about the potential that technology has to change the world. Look at all the crazy things tech is doing. Just this week, Amazon announced it's going to have drones deliver things. You can order a box of cereal, and 30 minutes later, a drone delivers it to your doorstep. <laughs> Think about self-driving cars and 3D printing. It's crazy. And if we think, take it a next a step further, we realize that a lot of the traits of nerds are very similar to the traits of leaders. People who really want to do something about the problem that they see in the world or something that they're excited about. They want to work with people who are, are as excited about it as they are. They want to learn and they're really, really impassioned to do something. So being a girl geek is absolutely awesome. So the first reason is because being a nerd isn't about what you love. It's about how you love it. Our next two reasons are focused a little bit more on technology, both because that's the field we're in and because it's where a lot of the stereotypes lie. Um, so if you think about you know, what is our general concept in the media of what an engineer's job is, you're alone, you're doing work by yourself in a corner, you don't really interact with other people. It's a very, very isolating job. But is, is that the truth? It's actually not really the truth. 
Alora and I have both worked at tech companies and we've seen otherwise. It's the closest thing to a meritocracy that you can find. You work with really smart people and learn so many different things throughout the day. You get to work on projects that you care about, flexible around your own schedule. And actually building a product is highly collaborative. You have to be meeting with different people, you have to be sharing your ideas, and constantly interacting. And if you're someone who likes to work on your own independent time, that's also very highly valued. So I remember my first tech internship was a couple summers ago, and I was working at this startup in Palo Alto that focuses on data visualization. And their products are used for a lot of finance data. And I remember my first couple days on the job, I was having a hard time because I don't really understand finance. Um, and so a couple days in, I go to my boss and I'm like, hey, you know, is there something I can do to do a better job of this? Because I don't really get what's going on. And she was like, yeah, pick something that interests you and work with that data. We don't really care, just as long as you love it. And so that was the same summer as a major soccer tournament was happening. And so what I did is, because that's something that interests me, I went to their website and I downloaded a whole bunch of data from the tournament. And by the end of the summer, I had used the software to prove how certain attributes of a team and a player can predict success in a major tournament. So here, was, here I was working on this project, becoming a better engineer, doing the thing I loved, working with people who supported me. And that's exactly the job I wanted to do. So being a professional nerd is the best job in the world. The third reason why it's awesome to be a girl geek is because you actually get to change the world. And yes, by that I mean you get to think of really cool ideas, identify what the problems are, and build upon that. But that's actually just one part of it. Arguably, the more important part of it is the fact that you are being the role model for the future generations. Generations who don't have a huge amount of these role models right now. You can't be what you can't see. So we have this really bad habit, especially in tech, of pointing to like the five women in tech. These are our five role models, and we name them over and over and over. But who are the girls in our community seeing on a daily basis doing these jobs? That could be us. That could be you. So by being a girl geek, you're helping show your daughters, your nieces, and your cousins that they can do this too one day. So we're here on the stage today to celebrate all the people who are already doing this, who are already being girl geeks, and they're bringing in a community where they can incorporate their interests and their passions and their love of science and technology. We're here because we see these two very powerful stereotypes. We see the girl and we see the geek. But we actually believe that there's this potential for the two of them together to be something more powerful than either of them is alone. And so, I'm not just a nerd. And I'm not just a girly girl. We like to call ourselves good girls gone geek. And we refuse to let anyone tell us that we can't be both. Thank you guys. Thank you.